Yeah, hi, uh, Kota. This is Michael. I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons, and you just completed one of my integrated uh, writing practice tests, the one on social networks, and I just read your essay, and you've paid to have the additional service to have me error correct uh, uh, your particular essay to show you what you can do to take what you've written and turn it into a perfect score, which is 5.0 out of 5. And I got good news for you. Uh, your essay is, is, is actually moving in the right direction. I think that I'm going to put you right now tentatively at 3.75 out of 5 or about 24 points out of 30. I think that you have stated... I think the most important points, I think, of the reading and also the lecture. Now, if I remember the question, it says, summarize the main points in the lecture, showing how they cast out on the main points in the reading passage. Now, what's interesting here is based on the question, when you get to these topic sentences of these these body paragraphs, it, based on the question, you might start off with the main point of the lecture first, and then you show how the reading is different from that. Then you go to the, uh, the next topic sentence, you state what the main point of the lecture is in that second counterpoint, then you show how the reading is different from that, and then so on and so forth. Now, the writing prompt could have been this. It might have been you know, summarize the main points in the reading passage and then explain how the lecture is different from that. And if you do that, then it would probably follow exactly the organization that you chose. But you know what? I don't think it's a really huge difference. As long as you're integrating the ideas and showing what the relationship is from, I think, the reading and the lecture. So I'm going to stick with the organization that you did and then I'll make a few changes as we go. So let's take a look at your first uh, paragraph. So the passage introduces us uh, the bad effects of the social network like Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace. I think that's a little bit vague, so we'll say this. We'll say claims. We'll say claims that social, I'm going to make this plural, social networks, I'm not going to use a comma there, just say claims that social networks like Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace create, pretend, friendships. So they create pretend friendships because they what's this is takeaway, I'm gonna say they limit They limit interaction. We we'll say they limit interaction foster fake friendships users to become addicted. So I'm, I'm just making the uh, your, your first paragraph, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more specific because this is kind of what's going on in the reading. So the passage claims that social networks like Twitter, Facebook, maybe put a comma, and, and MySpace create pretend friendships because they limit interaction.
I'm going to make a little bit of a change here. So we have uh, the passes claims that social networks like Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace failing to create community true socializing yeah I think that expresses more of the main point of the reading here I think we have our introduction done now so let's take a look at it again so it says the the passes claim to social networks like Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace and we have failing to create community and true socializing, limit interaction, foster fake friendships, and cause some users to become addicted. On the other hand, the lecture You might want to say <coughs> each of these assertions. So I'm trying to give you some vocabulary too to help you see how you can advance your vocabulary a little bit here. So I think we have it. So we have, again, let's look at the introduction one more time. So the passage claims that social networks like Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace failing to create community and true socializing, limit interaction, foster fake friendships, and cause some users to become addicted. On the other hand, the lecture opposes each of these assertions. First of all, I'm going to say social networks, not just the social network. If you say the social network, you're referring to only one, so we'll use plural here. So prevents people from having face-to-face -face communication. Let's look at what it says in the reading here. It says social networks have taken the place of face-to-face -face interaction and that takes away from much needed human interaction. So prevents have taken the place of we'll say largely replace face-to-face -face communication the passage says a real friendship must be built by a real discussion. I'm going to change this to because you have plural people, so real discussions among people. Make this plural too. So real friendships must be built by real discussions among people. And it says in that second paragraph, the main thing is, is you're doing a pretty good job here, I'll be honest with you. You're, you're summarizing, which means you're not trying to explain everything. You're trying to catch the main ideas, 
my job as a TOEFL teacher looking at your writing is to make sure you haven't changed the meaning of any important information and you haven't left out any important information. That's what I'm checking right now. So, building friendships over time used to mean a friendship of dis or used to mean a friendship of discussion. Yeah, I think you're pretty good here. I, I think you have what you need. So let's go to the lecture now. It says the lecture in contrast says that because of the social network, we can build friendships with many people all over the world, even if we are at home. This, I think you might have left out an important idea here. Additionally, the speaker argues that This is, I think, what you want to say here. It's similar to, says if we look back at communication before technological advancements like the internet, we'll see that soldiers, housewives, even presidents wrote letters to communicate. I think I would probably say something like that. So we have an additionally speaker argues that social networks are similar to letters that people in the past used to stay in touch with their loved ones. Okay, let's go to the next idea. Second of all, the passage claims now this runs you into some trouble here. I'm going to say that and then we know this is going to be a noun clause that social networks have. And let's go back to the reading, make sure we're not missing any points here. So So we have, according to the reading, some users have hundreds of friends or followers on Facebook and Twitter. The definition of friendship has changed negatively. So you say social networks have changed the meaning of friendship. by defining it as simply posting pictures short messages. Okay, I think we're getting there. 
So we have second of all the pastor's claims that social networks have changed the meaning of friendship. By defining it as simply posting pictures, status updates, and short messages. You have the idea of her we. We cannot say posting comments and upload. You want to say uploading there if you use that. Do you? We cannot say posting comments and uploading pictures on it or on them is a real communication and friendship, but has become the meaning of it. That's a little bit unclear what you're trying to say there. This idea, and I wouldn't use we here, you're summarizing the information, so I would focus more on the third person singular, the they, the it, the he, or the she, not the we. That's the appropriate point of view, I think, when you're summarizing information. Okay, I'm going to take your idea here, say something like, So let's look at that. So the passage claims that social networks have changed the meaning of friendship by defining it as simply posting pictures, status updates, and short messages. I think that'll, that'll probably catch the meaning there. Because it does say, friendships will be made by simply logging onto a website and sending digital requests rather than being built over time and interaction. say they do not require to action. You know, one thing that I like about your, um, your essay, I think that works really well, is you're pretty careful you're using those transition words at exactly the right moments, I think, of your uh, paragraphs. For example, on the other hand, you say the lecture insists it is a different style of pen pal system. So it's a different style of pen pal system, not unlike those used in the past. Except today's pen pal. To 
to use today's technology, the tradition, the traditional, I think you want to say this, the traditional pen pal system I would say that. I think that's important because that defines how the pen pal system was in the past as opposed to how it is now. But I think we're okay here. So let's take a look at, at this paragraph. I think that we have everything that we need now. You have, second of all, the past's claims that social networks have changed the meaning of friendship by defining it as simply posting pictures, status updates, and short messages. These forms of communication, the speaker argues, will not create lasting friendships because they do not require interaction. On the other hand, the lecturer insists it is a different style of pen pal system not unlike those used in the past. To use today's technology, the traditional pen pal system in which one person wrote letters to someone else has changed to these social networks such as Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace. Say social networks cause we'll say contends that I'm trying to use different words here. What do we say before the the passage says, the passage claims? Here we'll say the passage contends. So we're trying to demonstrate a variety of verbs here. And I you want to make sure that you're when you're summarizing, you have to do it from the point of view. So you forgot to put who was saying this. Uh, third of all, the reading passage contends that social networks cause addiction. I'm going to use a connector here so you don't have two short sentences because people feel an obsession to post something on the site. You need, this is a problem, this is what's called a comma splice. You're joining two independent clauses together, but if you put and in there, it works perfectly. Then we have solved your sentence formation problem, right? So you say, a third of all, the reading passage contends that social networks cause addiction because people feel an obsession to post something on the site, and then their primary activity I'm going to say centers. That's a little bit better verb there. Centers on the social network. Now, addiction is, if we look at the reading passage, let's look at this. It says, uh, it says they have good intentions when they started, but updating turns into obsession. It's their primary activity or action of the day. Along with video games, social networks have overtaken people's time in, in, in which time creates a more dormant and repressed society. You might want to say, 
If you become addicted, you're doing something at the expense of other things. For example, maybe you need to pay your bills that day. Maybe you need to go to work that day. But instead of paying your bills or going to work, you call in sick for work. You're not paying your bills. You're focusing strictly on the Facebook or the, or the Twitter or the MySpace, right? Maybe something like that. So let's read it again here. Third of all, the reading passage contends that social networks cause addiction because people feel an obsession to post something on the site and then their primary activity centers on the social network even at the expense of other important day-to-day -day activities. However, according to the lecture, the social network has become A new norm, I'm going to say in, not of, in our society. So instead of the social net, instead of the social network users, people who are not, people who, I'm not going to say, who do not belong to the site have felt repression. They are refused, I don't know, isolated. I think isolated is probably a better word here by the whole society. But let's take a look at the key points in the lecture now, make sure we're not missing anything. Again, when you're summarizing, the main thing is you cannot change the meaning of anything and you don't want to leave out any important ideas. So, and I still stand by my score. I'm giving you a score of three, a three point seven five quota on this particular writing practice test, or twenty four points out of thirty. So, I, I think you have a, a really strong, I think, sense of organization. You have pretty good control over your vocabulary and your grammar and all those things, right? I'm just making a few minor changes to show you how to get what's called a perfect score on this particular uh, writing task. Okay, so the lecture says, if social online networks are the new norm of modern society, then addicted to social networks may not carry as much weight. Addiction can be redefined as routine or habitual because social networks are now part of the social norm. To say someone is addicted to social networks is to say that the person is addicted to the social norms and everyday customs of modern American society. Father, mother, teenagers, even politicians use social networks to communicate and create friendship. Perhaps those who do not participate in social networks can be viewed as repressed because they refuse to assimilate into the current technological and societal advancements. And let's see what you say. However, according to the lecture, the social network has become a new norm in our society, so instead of the social network users, uh, I, this is where you're running into some trouble. This is some trouble. So instead of I'm going to say viewing This is what you had to say here. So, instead of viewing social network users as addicts,
And because you said according to the lecture here, I'm going to get rid of this and we'll say, however, the social network has become a new norm in our society. So instead of viewing social network users as addicts, the speaker argues should be redefined you might say even claiming I think that's kind of what you say Maybe those people who don't, do not belong social networks. Okay, let's keep working with this. So we have, however, the social network has become a new norm in our society. So instead of viewing social network users as addicts, the speaker argues that the that addiction should be redefined, even claiming that those people who do not belong to social networks have felt rep repression because they're isolated by the whole society. You might say something like this, therefore, those who regularly use social networks should not be seen as being addicted since they are simply using what is considered normal, healthy, behavior. I think we have it. So let's look at that one more time. Now we need to read the whole essay one more time to, to straighten out any further problems with the writing. But you can see here, this is a, I apologize for, for taking so long on this, but this is a, a fairly arduous process to go through your essay and compare what you wrote to the reading passage in the lecture, and then take a look at what you did in terms of your organization, uh, your development, in terms of your control of your sentence formation, your vocabulary usage, and everything else that's important in helping you score high on this. So I am making some changes here to give you an idea of what you need to do in order to get the highest possible score on this essay. So you say, third of all, the reading passage contends that social networks cause addiction because people feel an obsession to post something on the site, and then their primary activity centers on the social network, even at the expense of other important day-to-day -day activities. However, the social network has become a new norm in our society, so instead of viewing social network users as addicts, the speaker argues that addiction should be redefined, even claiming that those people who do not belong to social networks have felt repression because they are isolated by the whole society. That's probably a little bit wordy. Just say isolated by society. 
Therefore, those who regularly use social networks should not be seen as being addicted since they are simply doing what is considered normal, healthy behavior. To sum up, we're at our conclusion now. My goodness. And let's change this. This is what you wrote, right? This now becomes my edited version here. And then I will also send you a copy of what you wrote so you can compare with the original. That's yours right there. And this is mine here. You see, to sum up, the bad effects and the good ones of the social network have the same root, the meaning of friendship and how we belong. No, 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 no. Now, we got to put together the reading and the lecture here, so I don't like this particular conclusion. I don't think that's really the best way. What you have to do is you have to take this idea and then kind of make a restatement here. You might just sum up the lecture clearly How about this? Use a present participle here. So, the lecture clearly disagreeing with three arguments made against social networks. Now we need to just a little bit, you don't have to do this. Now remember, if you just said this to sum up the lecture, clearly disagrees with three arguments made against social networks. If you just ended it like that, you're okay. Let's say you're running out of time, Kota, and you're looking at your watch or you see the time on the computer screen and you only have a minute. At least do something, right? Now I'm going to do a little bit more than that to just show you a possible way to end the essay. So asserts that these new technological forms of communication you might say building friendships Communicating to loved ones
And this is what I tried to do here is to present some of the arguments that the lecture is making, right? So if I say this, uh, to sum up the lecture, clearly disagreeing with the three arguments made against social networks asserts that these new technological forms of communication are successful in, and check out my parallel structure here, building friendships, communicating to loved ones, and creating new accepted ways of communicating with others. Here. That's it. We got it. Now let's take a look at our spell check. Now, I, I your word count was fine. You do not have to write this much. If we look at, at the word count here, I'm a little bit over the top. So if anybody else is watching this video, you do not have to be this detailed. But I was just trying to give an example of, of some changes that Colta can make. Okay, let me check the word count here. Hold on. I think you were 269 words. And mine is 375, so it is a little bit more. Okay, let's go through the whole thing one more time. The passage claims that social networks like Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace failing to create community and true socializing, limit interaction, foster fake friendships, and cause some users to become addicted. On the other hand, the lecture opposes each of these assertions. First of all, social networks largely replace face-to-face -face communication, the passage says. Real friendships must be built by real discussions among people. The lecture, in contrast, says that because of the social networks, I'm going to say plural here, we can we can, uh, I don't think that's the right point of view. I'm going to say friendships can be built with many people all over the world, even if not we, they are at home. So. This is the appropriate point of view. This is what I'm talking about. Focus more on the content. You don't have to bring the audience into your uh, uh, essay here. You can do more of that in the independent writing task. So the lecture in contrast says that because of the social networks, friendships can be built with many people all over the world, even if they are at home. Additionally, the speaker argues that social networks are similar to letters that people in the past used to stay in touch with their loved ones. Second of all, the passage claims that social networks have changed the meaning of friendship by defining it, defining it as simply posting pictures, status updates, and short messages. These forms of communication, the speaker argues, will not create lasting friendships because they do not require interaction. On the other hand, Maybe we should say here, it's even better, because you can interact by writing, right? But face-to-face -face is different. On the other hand, the lecture insists it is a different style of pen pal system not unlike those used in the past to use today's technology the traditional pen pal system in which one person wrote letters to someone else has changed to the social networks such as Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace. Third of all, the reading passage contends that social networks cause addiction because people feel an obsession to post something on the site and then their primary activity centers on the social network, even at the expense of other important day-to-day -day activities. However, the social network has become a new norm in our society, so instead of viewing social network users as addicts, the speaker argues that addiction should be redefined, even claiming that those people who do not belong to social networks have felt repression because they are isolated by society. Therefore, those who regularly use social networks should not be seen as being addicted since they are simply doing what is considered normal, healthy behavior. 
To sum up, the lecture clearly disagreeing with the three arguments made against social networks asserts that these new technological forms of communication are successful in building friendships, communicating to loved ones, and creating new accepted ways of communicating with others. And there it is. We got it. Sokoto. This is what you wrote. Your score is 3.75 out of 5 or 24 points out of 30. This essay scores 5.5 out of 5 or 30 out of 30. So, I did make some changes, as you can see, throughout the essay. I, I added some things. I got rid of some things that you said. I did make some changes in your introduction and also your conclusion. And there were a few few little ideas here and there. You had some minor problems with social, with uh, sentence formation and a few word things here and there. But you actually have pretty good writing. So I'm going to tell you that, that I think you're going to do very well uh, when you do the writing on the TOEFL, just remember to have a good, strong, specific introduction. Make sure your conclusion ties everything together. And make sure to focus, I think, on the most important points and the sub-points of both the reading and the lecture. And that's it. Anyway, thank you for completing this particular writing practice test. And uh, I've enjoyed having you as a student so far. And keep up the good work.